Hi Siddharth, how are you doing? Hi ma'am, I'm doing really well. Thank you. Uh, nobody calls me ma'am, just address me yeah. as Bayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Siddharth, congratulations on your score 750, Q49, V42. How does it feel? Yeah. Thank you. It feels really great. Uh, done yeah. and dusted. Absolutely done and dusted and now you're all set for your application, which is really, which is going to be a really interesting experience. Um, so, all right. So it, this was your third attempt, right, Siddharth? The first one really? you took back in college, which was about what, seven years back? Uh, yeah. Five years back? No, no. That was, yeah, five years back in my five final years. year. Right, right, right. And that was 680. So you, you were already at a pretty good level. Um, yeah. Then you, uh, in 2020, you got a 720. And that was right. after preparing, um, right? And then you you were at a very solid foundation. Now, 720 to 750, that's where EGMAT yes. came in. So yes. help me understand um, this journey from 720 to 750. Right. So in my second attempt, I got a 720. But in mocks, I was getting a really high score. So I was getting the 742, 717, and 780. And I'd given all the six official mocks. And uh, that was my graph at that time. But I was quite surprised when I saw a 720 on the screen because I thought uh, I had the ability to get a 750 or a 740 at least. Mm -hmm. uh, but after that, I thought of retaking it, but I got busy with work. So there was a gap of one, one and a half years. And uh, I wasn't able to give the GMAT at that time. So that's when I heard about eGMAT. And I thought of starting back my preparation. And... Uh, I did the whole course, both verbal and quant, uh, from EGMAT, and uh, I the experience was uh, very good uh, with the course, mm -hmm. and all the topics and all the details were covered in detail. Mm -hmm. So and, despite being at a strong foundation, you decided yeah. to go through the whole course because, you know, you, because it, it, it was after a gap of one and a half years that you were coming back to GMAT prep. Right. Okay, good, good. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had lost touch with the uh, study, so I wanted to you know, give my best shot this time mm -hmm. and uh, uh, not le leave any stone unturned in my preparation. Makes sense. So, mm -hmm. To do the whole course again. Okay, good. Then what, what, what did you do next after going through the course? What was the next thing that you did? So after finishing up the course, I uh, obviously... Uh, as uh, the EGMAT course recommends going through the cementing quizzes and the test readiness quizzes, which is a time practice mm -hmm. uh, followed. And I think uh, it really uh, worked wonders for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that this time practice this time is what tipped the scales for me. Because uh, in my previous attempt, although I had all my concepts clear and uh, you know, I had a good uh, uh, level of understanding of the concepts, but uh, the thing that was lacking was that I didn't uh, focus too much on uh, practice, practicing under the time environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only time I did a time practice was when I was giving up, giving the mocks. So you skipped two steps, cementing and test readiness. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I skipped uh, those two. Yes, and yes. Maybe, you know, at home you're more relaxed, so you're able to uh, complete the time within, uh, complete the exam within the time constraints. But... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think the nerves got better of me during the actual exam. And uh, that's what uh, the EG Matt Scholarinium uh, came into picture the second time around. Okay. And uh, I had already gone through that uh, time pressure, uh, so to say. So the second time around, it was a lot easier for me to uh, focus on the exam and complete it under uh, the time. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show the, the cementing quizzes that you took just to show the rigor that you applied. So this is your uh, cementing quiz. So you did medium uh, cementing, then you, oh, this was hard. You did medium and you made sure that you passed the thresholds and then hard. You did the same thing for CR here, um, three hard quizzes. And then I took RC, I know you didn't focus as much. Oh, you did RC as well. So, and, and the same thing I believe you did in quant as well. Let's check real quick. Um, okay. Quant as well, you did the cementing quizzes. So good. So this is what 
it helped you as, as you did cementing quizzes in each of these subsections wherein you're just being tested on one, one question type at a time. You did that and then you followed it up with these multiple quizzes that you did. You know, these are the test readiness quizzes that you took and you did them very diligently. And that's what tipped the scales this time around and gave you the level of confidence that you needed in order to get to that 750 in the test environment. Is that correct, Siddharth? Yeah, perfectly. Fine, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, good. So uh, that's really amazing. And I'm sure that, um, well, if there was one thing that you wanted to, well, one thing or maybe two things that you wanted to tell GMAT aspirants, what would you tell them based on your experience? Uh, I think uh, the first would be to, in the beginning of your preparation, I think students should focus more on the quality of uh, mistakes that they're committing rather than quantity. Mm -hmm. That be their beginning uh, aim, but once they're comfortable with the the questions and how to approach the questions in the um, uh, using the right process, mm -hmm. then also focus on quantity. You cannot uh, leave quantity alone. Quantity because, with time, right? Yeah, correct. Quantity with time. Mm -hmm. Practice as important as uh, having clear concepts. Mm -hmm. Quantity has a quality of its own. Absolutely. So, yeah, one should focus on that in the second step. But obviously, first get your process in place mm -hmm. and your concept place and uh, I think yeah, that's the mm -hmm. piece of very well said very well said and you know students uh, you're absolutely right I mean students in the first stage itself stage one of learning they focus so much on you know I have to practice 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 they don't go slow right. initially you have right. to go slow and what you did was absolutely perfect even though you knew the processes you went slowly through the entire course I mean you did not leave even a single concept unattempted in SC and CR quant again you were always at Q49 so you didn't really have to go through each and everything so you made sure that you ticked all the boxes with the right spirit and then then you, you applied all the processes in timed environment, which was the key that was missing in your 720 attempt. So doing both is very, very important. So very well said. All right, Siddharth, that was really, it was wonderful talking to you and we wish you all the very best for your MBA applications. Keep in touch and let us know how it goes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and thanks for all the support throughout the journey. You're most welcome. That's what we're here for. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you. Thanks.